How's it going? This is Stefan Arstall with uh, Tower Electric Bikes. I'm the CEO and founder. Um, today we're going to run through um, the whole electrical system on this bike, replacing the whole electrical system. I've got uh, Ray Gilman here with me. He's our sort of house mechanic. Uh, he's got like 30 years experience in the uh, the bike industry. Tell them a little bit about yourself, Ray. Uh, yeah, I run a local shop called The Bicycle Mechanic. I've been in the business since I was about 16 years old. Uh, been working on bikes since the mid 80s and I love electric bikes. They're a great way to get around. Tower makes an excellent product. I do a lot of uh, uh, service and uh, repair related uh, uh, service here at Tower as well as R&D for new bikes. Yeah, so, and Ray is not just a, a bike mechanic, that's what he was originally, but now he's got e-bike certification, so he really understands all the electrical components and stuff like that, and that is, a, you know, the big part of electric bikes, the complicated part. Uh, so he's an expert on that, and we use Ray uh, with all of our new bikes as we roll something out. Um, you know, he's really helped us with the, the engineering and making sure we're, we're bringing the quality product to market. So let's get to it. Um, today we're going to uh, basically replace the whole electrical system. That sounds really complicated, right, Ray? But it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's surprisingly not. <laughs> and if something your electrical bike happens, we can literally mail you an entire uh, you know, electric component system for the bikes, which is four pieces. You've got a controller here. Uh, that's this little piece on the bike here. Um, you've got this uh, wiring harness, which seems just tiny, but that's actually the harness that sort of shoots the whole, uh, you know, bike here. And then you've got a uh, LCD display, we'll get that out in a second, but that's uh, sort of what you're reading when you're looking at the bike. And then in this big box here is the rear tire. So we've made this a modular bike. So basically the motor is inside the rear tire here, and the tire, everything, you can just pull that whole thing off. You unplug it here, pull the whole thing off, grab a new one, put it right back on, plug it in, and you're good to go. So you replace those four things, and you have basically a brand new electrical system on your bike. That's correct. You are going to need a few tools to do this job. Uh, first, we've got this little tiny guy here. This is a three millimeter socket Allen. Uh, you can also get away with a little tiny uh, right angle ball in socket. Um, we're going to need a four millimeter as well socket or a little tiny ball in socket, a, uh, a wrench to remove the rear wheel. You can either use an 18 millimeter wrench or an adjustable crescent wrench, uh, as well as a roll of electrical tape and a new or used brake cable. So first thing we're going to start off with is um, the, uh, the electrical front, uh, the screen assembly and unwrapping the wires. So Tower puts these really great little covers on all of their electrical. Uh, so we're going to just pull that back and expose the connectors. There's several different things that could happen. Say your bike isn't going, or uh, the screen isn't coming on, or you have some sort of an error code. The first place you're gonna start is this, these four connectors here. Um, so say your bike isn't going, it doesn't wanna go. First thing you might try is disconnecting the two plugs coming from the brake here. Yeah, I want to jump in here for yeah. one second. Like a lot of times, the recent customers come to us and they say, hey, my bike's not working, or yeah. I'm getting this weird error code. That's the first mm -hmm. notification that something is wrong with your, your system. One error code we get is a lot, is called an error 30. And basically what that means is, tell me if this is right, Ray, but it's essentially your LCD screen is not communicating with your control. That's correct. Right? Yes. So that's kind of a problem on the front side of the bike. And there's, there's four or five different error codes. Some, they will tell you, okay, there's a problem on the rear side of the bike, problem on the front side of the bike. With like an error 30 code, you got your four electrical components in this system. And as Ray has explained it to me, you take, you start at the front. You start troubleshooting by you first take off the LCD screen. Well, first you just make sure all the connections are right. My that can be the easy thing, right? My first initial troubleshoot is the brakes. So, okay. I, so if there's ever an issue with the bike, the first thing I do is disconnect the brakes and see if the bike will work. If that's not going to... Now, so if there's an error code and you disconnect the brakes, will that sometimes clear the Sometimes, code? yeah. It depends okay. on what the error code is because you can generate an error code by holding down the brake while you power on the bike. 
It's basically what that's saying is that this switch is disconnected and it's telling the controller to disconnect the power from the motor. So why that's happening is on a traditional bike, you just have mechanical brakes, basically a lever and a wire that does something, you know, some clamp down here on your brakes. With electrical bikes, they're kind of tied into the motor to different degrees, right, Ray? They are. The, the brake has a cutoff switch. Basically what it does is it tells the controller to cut power to the motor as soon as you pull the brake. That way your, your motor isn't powering against your brakes while you're trying to stop. Okay, so I mean that's a critical thing here. Um, what he's unwrapping here is you've got one, two, three, two, con two connections on either side. So you've got four total connections here. And these are kind of tricky connections when you look at them really close. There's like little arrows, you've got to line them up. And there's little prongs and you've got to get those perfectly seated in there. It's not uh, you're totally intuitive how to do that. But yes, it is, it is important to line up the errors whenever you're reconnecting your connections on all points of the bike. So now we've got all the little wrap off here. Um, we're going to get into this screen. So we have the screen plug here. You can, you can unplug that. Uh, this, this is a, going to be the simplest fix for error code 30. Unplug this, plug a new screen in, power on the bike, check error code 30. If error code 30 still persists, then there is potentially a problem in the wiring harness. So we're going to just... So let's, let's stop there. So say I had to replace this. How do I replace this? So there's a little tiny screw on the back. Um, this is the LCD is that we would LCD. be replacing. There's just one screw. I believe it's three and a half or three. This is three and a half. Come around my mic here so they can, they can see that bit. This is the three millimeter. And there's just the one screw here. You unscrew this guy. Remove the screw. So here's how your LCD display is going to come. Uh, it's just in a box like this. You pull it out, that's the entire thing there. Remove the LCD. You kind of see that? You've just taken that one off, swapping this one off. Take the new one and put it, remove the screw. A lot of times, if, um, you know, we're sort of doing technical troubleshooting because we're a, you know, a direct consumer uh, e bike company. People that are working on them aren't so familiar with it. So we, we tend to just sort of oversend you stuff. You take off the other the bad stuff or the existing stuff and just send it back to us and we'll troubleshoot it on our side. But you you uh, can just basically swap out pieces. We've designed the bike to be very modular. Um, so you can work on it yourself or any local mechanic can do it for you. Now we've replaced the, the screen. Very simple installation. Um, the other, the, the last of the four plugs is the throttle. So Ray, I want to I just hammer in on that point yes. there. So literally, if I had an error, um, the Tower Electric Bike sends me this piece. Yes. I just take that off, plug that back in, That's I'm right. back and going. Yeah, and just make sure like you're using little fix. errors in the pins. And there's even a little internal pin in the plug that lines the plug up. So as long as you put this plug back together correctly, uh, that, should, that should... And these are color-coded, too. Yeah. You notice the brakes are red, this one's green. All four of these plugs are slightly different. You cannot mix them up. Uh, they, they're, it's just not possible. They won't go together. And yes, like Stefan said, they're color-coded. Uh, they're pin-aligned. So it's very uh, difficult to, to actually make an incorrect connection. So, okay, so that's, that's component one of the electrical system, the LCD screen. So what he's done here is just replace that, plug it back in, then you're going to fire it back up, test it, and just see if you get error codes. That's right? correct, yeah. And so then uh, the same thing with the throttle. You just disconnect the plug of the throttle. You can plug a new throttle in. Um, we don't have a throttle assembly out here, but... Um, now, would you want to check the throttle if you had some kind of an error system? So, the only thing that I've ever really seen uh, is the magnets come loose inside the throttle, and then it just doesn't send a throttle signal. And, you know, there is an on-off button, so you want to make sure that your on button is engaged. Uh, and, and the bike truly isn't responding to the throttle. It's not we, just we've had people uh, say sometimes that this bike will stick. Okay. Is that uh, just a mechanical? Uh, like, it should be okay damage. as long as it's sticking on. Okay. I mean, you see how you push it in and it stays in? They yeah. might perceive that as sticking, which I think that could just be oh, a I see. error. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> can we get some of that? So, if I was to take an electric bike and just take the throttle off, does the bike still work? 
You like well, it does still work because you have pedal assist. So you have a pedal assist bike at that point. This is an interesting distinction because in a lot of uh, you know locales or different countries around the world, you can't have a throttle bike. That's correct. So you can basically take the tower bike and turn it into a pedal assist only bike by just removing that. You plug that wire, remove it. You still have a functional bike. That's correct. Uh, just tape up and, and wrap this that other cable right in there. Yep. So the last connection here on the this end of the wiring harness is the light. We'll just unplug that, and uh, we're so now you're dealing with uh, the wiring harness. Now we're going to replace the wiring harness itself. Uh, this is the, the the so this is the whole wiring harness. We get sent this. It seems like a really simplistic piece. Like when a lot of people like see the electrical system for a bike, they're like, "Well, you didn't really send me everything here." But it really is. It's that cable. It's the LCD monitor. It's the controller right here. And then it's just the whole rear, you know, motor, which is built into the tires. There's only four pieces. Yeah. So this is one. This is your whole electrical harness. It sort of feeds through like this. And we're going to fish this out. Because you've got a bunch of stuff up here on the top of the electrical harness, and only one, uh, like, plug in on the back, you're going to fish that out this way, through this hole and that hole. Now, because uh, the electric bikes are pretty tight on the, uh, the bars here. Some are tighter than others. Ours is, ours is quite tight. Um, so we're going to pull this electrical harness out. Um, he's going to attach a brake cable to it when we pull that out so we still have the ability to feed another one back through. And then he's, he's going to take our uh, brake cable. And we're going to pull that out and then we're going to feed the electrical harness back in and then we're going to feed the brake cable back in. And the reason we do it in that, uh, that process is this, this is a little more substantial cable than the brake cable. The brake cable is the last one to get through there because there's three wires that go through there. So, uh, then we have to pull the old harness out, and when we do that, we fish, uh, well, first we tape a, a cable, an old brake cable to the old harness and fish the cable through the frame. Uh, I go ahead and pull that cable out. No, so so let, me, let me go into that a little yeah. bit. So with the brake cable, what he's done here is he's just taken an old brake cable, and you can use an uh, electrical wire or something like that, and you can see down here, he's taped that on to the, the one end of the harness and just made, what, six or seven, uh, Wraps on the correct. tape. You yeah. want it to be super secure because you're going to pull this pretty substantially, and then you can attach this cable on. So he's going to feed this through, and then when he gets to the end here, the brake cable is going to be in the middle of it, and he's going to use that to fish back. Yeah. So that's how you can do it on an existing e-bike that you get from us because you're going to have that cable in there. You don't just want to yank that cable out. So there's no way to fish it back in there without a tool that the factory has. So this is a critical step. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and back this brake cable all the way out um, and pull it pull it out of the tube. Okay, so the brake cable, you didn't attach any wire to that. I didn't, no. So I just, you just yanked that one I through. just pulled it out um, and, and then you can actually use the brake cable to pull your fish or you can use the harness to pull your fish. I use the harness. We'll pull the harness out. Uh, once the brake cable is out, then the harness... Um, uh, the new harness gets taped on and goes back in, which we've actually pre-fitted pre at this point. And then as I'm trying to get the, the large cable through the hole at the bottom of the bike, I have to twist this harness around a little bit and, and work the cable back and forth while I'm twisting until I get the end of the cable to come out of the hole down here. You gotta be patient with this. It takes a little bit of time and finesse. Once you get it done, then Pull it out, you want to tape your cable and your, your, your harness is installed and you can fish. So your... Ray, let's, let's take that harness out and put it back in with the fish. I just want to show, because there is a little bit of a struggle here. So if you're doing this at home, it's not just, oh, we fish it out, you, you, you go back in, but it's, it's, it's kind of challenging. You want me to hold this? Okay. So there's the brake cable is out and then the... And then the... Now we're on the harness. You can see there's a little more struggle. There's, there's a, a, a hang-up inside of here. Okay. That, that, um, okay. It doesn't want to come through. So it can get hung up in certain spots. That's why you want to really, you got to have this thing on super secure. Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to unwrap this. You're going to, and then you're going to put your other, uh, your brand new one on 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 back on the exact so same way. Exact like, like, same way. So no, we're not, we don't need to do that step. You can also, like if you're working on a bike on a, on a stand here like this, you can take a, um, what do you call this thing? Zip tie. A little zip tie. You can tie it around the tire here and around this top tube, and that will hold that bike so it's not whacking in the head here. 
Okay. So now this is where I've got it fit through and I'm, I'm, and I'm encountering some resistance at the bottom. I just got lucky, came right through that time. So now once so if it doesn't come right through, you got to twist it around twist it. And, and spin it around and work work it back and forth until it goes right through. And so what you to understand here, you got this tube coming down, and then there's a little like hole in the bottom of the tube, and then it drops down. And you'll you'll be able to see this if you look close to your bike. But you got to sort of pull down because it's going down the tube, and then you got to shoot into this other tube. So you're gonna go give a downward pressure with this bike cable. Then I've got my brake cable. Uh, the brake cable. It, Internal cable will be a little deformed from the pinch bolt here. Uh, I just push that right to the tip of the end, but I don't I don't pull it all the way through. This is just uh, to make it easier for me to get this back in. And at this point, all you do is fish this in. So you don't need a you don't uh, brake need cable to fish for this part of it. Yeah. Now why is that? It's just because it's because so, the house so rigid. Is so rigid. Yeah. And okay. now watch this little. So you don't have that same rigidity in the, in the cabling harness that you do have in the brake cable. This is again a little bit of fumbling, trying to trying to fit this, and there it is. So now we've got our brake cable and our new harness pull. Okay, now one thing I, I want you guys to know is I don't know how easy or difficult that looked on camera, but it's not it's not super easy. It's, and you know, Ray's been doing this for 35 years, so if you find you're struggling with that, I mean, that's a good uh, point to take it to a local bike mechanic and have them fish that through you if you're having any problems. You don't drive yourself mad with that. You can try it yourself, but if you get really frustrated with it, uh, it is a little tricky. All right, so now that we've got our harness pulled through and our brake cable pulled through, uh, we can go ahead and replace the controller module. Okay, and remember, you gotta replace that, uh, your, your brake cable back. And yes, back of there. course, this will all need to be buttoned back up and you'll know, have to push your brake cable through. Where do you, uh, so let's do that brake cable while, while we, we got it here, just to show my next little step here. So you're gonna seat this up top there. Push the cable back through, get the uh, part with the pin, where the pinch bolt is pulled, pulled it uh, back, back out, route the cable correctly, put the cable back into the brake caliper. We've got a separate video that shows this in detail, uh, but you know you want to sort of do this thing in an organized manner and get these cables out of the way before you start taking the rest of the electrical system apart here. And we have our pinch bolt coming off, so we'll go ahead and put this back together. That's fine. You got all the pieces there. So yes, I do. I'm just okay. adding the pinch bolt here. Then I'll get this guy cable in and back on. So uh, basically, we we've replaced you know two of the four uh, components of the electrical system. Now we've replaced the LCD screen. Uh, we've replaced the central center uh, cable harness. You know both those things can be sent in a really small box to you. So that's the you know the design of this bike is very modular. So that you know, you can we can send you a little envelope, and you can replace half your electrical system. The only other components we have is uh, this controller here, uh, which basically has three bolts on it. You pull that off, and it's got three uh, sort of connection points coming off the bottom. One connection point uh, goes to the center a cable harness that we just uh, took out. Another one goes to the PAS system, uh, which is this little thing that sort of uh, counts the cadence of your pedal, and it, it matches your your power of the motor. And the other cable. Uh, connects to the, uh, the motor on the rear wheel. Um, so the next step, and this is actually a really easy step, it's just gonna take a couple minutes to pull this off, grab the new controller, slap it back in there. Um, you know, and you just mail the, the old parts back to us if we're doing some kind of a troubleshooting situation. So that will be step three, and then step four is we take the, uh, the rear wheel off. So to take the controller off, you're gonna need a four millimeter and a three millimeter. This is a really easy uh, segment. But the bolt down here is really sort of hard to get to. So what do you recommend for getting to that bolt? Right? The short ratchet, the small ratchet with a four millimeter is the easiest way to get to this bolt.
four millimeter what? Um, hex, hex wrench? Yeah, six, okay. six sizes of Allen. So a lot of our customers will have problems with this small, um, this hex at the bottom, just because the angle of it is kind of funny here. So you got to get the right tool. If you're trying to use a regular tool, it's going to sort of drive me nuts. So that may be even be a tool that you would want to go specially buy. It's a really short uh, hex wrench on a, what do you call them, ratchet set? Yep. That's the tool that you can use for all the bolts, right? Yep. But are they different sizes, did you say? They are. This is a, there's three mil up top and four mil at the bottom. Okay. There's two three mils. And these tools can be purchased very inexpensively at a company like Harbor Freight. This is, they sell these in a set. Uh, okay. They're in the metric so socket lines. I dropped the box right out there. That's fine. This is the whole controller here. It's the controller yep. on our bike is a, is a little unique in that the, um, the battery slides right into the, uh, the battery mount and the controller is inside the battery mount. A lot of times bikes will have a, like a controller off in a separate box. It's kind of goofy. We've integrated it all right into that one piece. So this is how the controller will mail to you. It's a very simple piece. So swap out the other one, put this one in. It's got three plugs on it. One is the uh, pedal assist sensor. One goes to the motor and one goes to the wiring harness. Now they are all uh, specific and they have arrows on them. They have uh, centering pins and you just want to take note as you plug each plug together to make sure that you have the orientation correct. So fairly simple procedure, you just have a nut on either side and then you have one plug for the motor and then there's two zip ties holding the motor cable. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to cut the two zip ties. You can, I'm using a razor knife today, you can just use a pair of electrical bites. Now while Ray is doing this, I'm going to uh, remap the, uh, the, arm, the, the cables on the front of the bike with this uh, stuff that we have. And I won't even talk, you can talk, but I'll just sort of do this. You want to put these all together because it houses your cables uh, very neatly. And because we're a direct consumer brand, uh, we made this very easy for you to work on. It's not like a, uh, you know, a sealed like cable component that you got to cut off and then get a new one. You can just rewrap, unwrap, and rewrap this thing. It's a very flexible, easy to use when you're doing stuff yourself. All right, so I've removed the, the three zip ties that hold the uh, the motor cable. I'm going to unplug the motor cable here. You just Grab both ends and firmly pull apart. You'll notice that these cables have arrows on them. When you put, plug the cable back in, you want the arrows to point towards each other and line up. Uh, so we're going to let that cable hang. We're going to take the little rubber cover off the right hand nut. I mean, it's probably hard to see from that vantage point, but there's a little rubber cover. I'm going to go ahead and undo the axle nuts.
Get the washer stacked up right. And it helps to have a 10 millimeter wrench on hand or an adjustable wrench on hand just to turn the axle a little. And I'll just go ahead and take this nut off and show you how I'll take the wrench here, grab the flat sides of the axle, and then just turn the axle to line up with the grooves of the frame. And then, then the wheel goes right up into the frame. Now you can do this with the bike upside down and gravity working for you makes the assembly a little bit easier. Um, I've quite a bit of experience working on bikes, so I'm making this look easier than it actually is. Go ahead and get that nut set. Work my way over to the other side. This nut on. Tighten this nut down. Take our cable, route it underneath the frame and inside the brake cable. A little rubber cap goes on. And make sure when you're doing this, to be very careful with the cable that comes out of the end of the axle. If you lay the wheel down on that cable or bend that cable hard, it could damage the wires inside. Got to be very careful with that. When you pull this up inside the brake cable, again, we're going to line up our arrows on the cable, so we want to find those arrows on both the receiver and the, in, and the electrical plug. And then we're going to push those two together with the arrows pointing each other. And then it goes in about half an inch. You want to really firmly plug it in. So that is installing the rear wheel. So remember, we did this in four steps. First we did the screen, then we did the harness, then we did the controller, then we did the wheel. We're going to test each repair as we do them. So we don't go ahead and do it all at once. We'll replace the screen, test, we'll replace the wiring harness, test, replace the controller, test, then replace the wheel and test. And uh, hopefully that uh, is uh, enough information for you to replace your electrical system. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time.